competition begin. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Dan Debenham, and this is the 1996 U.S. First National Finals. We're at the American Garden stage here at Walt Disney World's Epcot Center in Orlando, Florida, to enjoy a truly different and yet spectacular contest between 74 extraordinary teams, each consisting of high school students, top corporate engineers, and a ball-playing robot. It's a potent mix of enthusiasm, teamwork, brain power, and sheer brute force. And it's not only made for a unique sporting event, for many of the young contestants here, it has changed their lives. At one point, I was going to be a lawyer, following my grandfather's footsteps, but now, after seeing what engineering is about and what you can do in engineering, I love it. Major aspect, which we really learned, is uh, teamwork. If we weren't a team, then it's not going to work. Two months ago, when someone said, oh, you guys are going to build a robot, it's like, yeah, right, you know, like, we can actually do that. And to see that we actually took this huge idea of a robot and did it, it's amazing. <laughs> I loved it. And Craig is standing by and will be with us throughout the contest, and... U.S. FIRST stands for, for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. And what a more perfect place to have it than at Walt Disney World's Epcot, where science and technology are used throughout the theme park. There are over 74 high school teams here competing today in this competition, and the spirit and the adrenaline is running high. I'm going to be interviewing the high school teams throughout the day, so we'll stay with them. And back to you, Dan. Right now, let's go to the playing field and get more specific about this competition. On a hexagon-shaped field, three robots battle against each other to get balls into a central goal. Each robot team can score balls through the bottom of the goal or over the top. Each team has 12 small balls worth three points each. And two large balls worth five or 10 points, depending on where they wind up in the goal. The maximum possible score is 56 points. Each robot has a human teammate as well, seatbelted in at a station on the edge of the field. Offense, they can feed their balls to their robot. Defense, they can keep opponents' balls out of play. And to score, well, they can join in the action themselves by throwing over a five-foot bar. Each round lasts two minutes. There's no one way to play this game, but there are some basic strategies. So our strategy for points is to get all the small balls and then go after the big balls. And we can do we can do both large balls in approximately 40, 45 seconds. We have a lot of things to keep track of. It's a very complex competition this year. Well, I'm I'm 6'8 and I play basketball, so I feel pretty confident that I can shoot the ball right in the goal. Frustrating, because you're strapped down, you can't do anything about it. The human players are defensive. We're leaving the robot more for offense. And right now, we're going to scatter the balls that are right in front of us, the eight balls, and then we're going to go for the uh, large balls that are up on the triangles. Well, right now, almost every team is convinced it's going to win the 1996 U.S. First Hexagon Havoc Championship. So let's get to the action. In the first round, the 1995 U.S. First Champions, Woodside High School from Woodside, California, partnered with Raychem Corporation, will be defending their title with a low-riding machine designed to pick up only these small three-point balls, then play aggressive defense. They'll be looking for the red balls. From Rochester, New York, Edison Technical High School, partnered with Harris Corporation and Rochester Institute of Technology, has a machine called Tiger Bolt. Its pair of Tigers can grab both small and large balls. They'll be looking for the blue balls. And going for the yellow balls, Middletown High School from Rhode Island is working with the Naval Undersea Warfare Center. They plan to fill a box with the small balls and push the box into the goal, blocking their opponents. So two of these three teams rely on defense to win. Let's okay, see if it works. Woody Flowers is our MC for the day. Take it away, Woody. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> And they're off. Out of the gate comes Tiger Bolt. He gobbles up a bunch of blue balls as the Edison technical drivers speed it over to the goal. As Tiger Bolt delivers, Woodside dumps in some yellow balls. And here comes Middletown with that box of theirs. But a uh, little too late to block out the others. But the Middletown rookies aren't out of it yet. Check this out. Each team has a large ball in the five-point spot. But look at Middletown. There goes Woodside's five points. And yeah, there goes Edison's. And Mike Tyson a 10, if you will. Now, can they deliver a 10-pointer? Yes. Middletown takes the lead. 
Nice play here by Alfonso Montana as he feeds Tiger Bolt some more three-point blue balls. Woodside is frantically trying to roll up its yellow balls, but Tiger Bolt is on a scoring frenzy. Check that out. With most of its three-pointers scored, Tiger Bolt goals for one of its large blue balls right now. Now as it's heads for the goal, we see what's, yeah, we see what happened to the other large blue ball held out of play by Woodside's human player. Pretty good defense there. And now it's a race between Tiger Bolt and Middletown to dump their large ball for 10 points. Tiger Bolt scores. Now Middletown's going for its second 10-pointer, but there is no room. Here comes Tiger Bolt on defense. The Middletown drivers have seconds left to evade Tiger Bolt and score. That's the buzzer. That sounds the end of the round. Will Middletown's large red ball count? That's the question. Well, the rules here state that a ball must be in or over the cylinder of the goal by 50% in order to count. Unofficially, it looks like 10 points for Middletown there, but they've still got what? One, two, three, four, let me see. There's five small red balls still out on the floor. That's 15 points not scored. And Edison Tech has one large and one small blue ball left. That's 13 points. So if all their others are in the goal, Tiger Bolt would have won by two points here. Tiger Bolt living up to their name with that speed and a aggressive play. Now, earlier, our cameras dropped in on the drivers of this talented Tiger team. I'm responsible for driving the car. I steer the car with this joystick. Well, he talks to me because he handles the moving the machine. I handle the up and down with the boulders and everything. So he talks to me if he's going somewhere, what kind of size balls he's getting. He tells me I do either the boulders, the elevator, and then we just communicate like that. Well, it was that type of communication between Edison Technical High School drivers that won the last round with a score of 43 points. Middletown and Woodside are still alive, however, because in this competition, it takes two losses till you're counted out. We'll get back to the championship action in just a moment, but first, let's go back six and a half weeks to the start of this competition. Manchester, New Hampshire was the site of this year's U.S. First Kickoff meeting. Here, the engineers and high school teachers from 93 teams learned the rules of this year's game and saw the playing field for the first time. This is the fifth year of the U.S. First competition, and each year the game is different. I think this year's competition is excellent because there are so many different possibilities, so many different possible solutions, and none of us know what the right one is right now. Each team gets an identical kit of parts to build their robot. The first challenge is to figure out what everything is and how they can use it. This is the stuff that you put in your gutter to keep the leaves off it, okay? And I have absolutely no idea how this is going to be useful at this point in time. Drill motors with the gears. Where are the drill motors? That's where the power is. Uh, now we've got pneumatics in here. We've got, I think, three or four more motors than we had before. The level of complexity or level of uh, sophistication we can add to this thing is going to be phenomenal this year. Now, students are not required to take the lead on designing and building, just to be greatly involved in the process. The engineers and teachers who provide the expertise then start to think about how to involve the students back home. There are going to be over 300 uh, students from the Quincy Public Schools working on this and we expect to generate uh, hopefully 300 ideas to run with. And how do you collect 300 yeah, ideas? We can do everything and anything. Brainstorming. Throughout the country, U.S. First teams are full of suggestions and questions. What you could use is wheels instead of treads, because wheels you can whip around a lot faster. Can a um, human shoot straight to the um, basket, or does it have to throw to the robot? There is one question on everyone's um, mind. When are we going to start building the robot? The students may be raring to go, but it's the job of the engineers to make sure they're ready. Here at the Nipro Corporation in Clinton, Massachusetts, the team has come up with a unique way to give the Clinton High School students a robot's eye view of the competition. Ready, set, go! Stubots, students standing in or sitting in for the robots. We saw what our machine had to do. We had to get a ball up and into the top of the goal. We had to pick up all the small balls at once. Secondly is the strategy. We're starting to see what teams will do to defeat us. This year's competition is dependent a lot upon strategy, and we're really working a lot of that strategy out right now. Strategy does play a big part in the competition, but so does keeping the machines running. The teams are continuously maintaining and fine-tuning their machines for the rounds ahead. Well, let's see how Clinton High School strategy works out. They're here partnered with Nipro Corporation playing the blue balls. 
from Cincinnati, Ohio, Walnut Hills High School, and Procter & Gamble with their robot Operation Orange are playing red and taking yellow. Guilford.